This program is sponsored in part by the Elizabethtown College Summer Scholarship, Creative Arts, and Research Projects. Elizabethtown College, educate for service. And the real story, the point of view that I want to <coughs> discuss today is that in fact, it doesn't make any sense because it's wrong. In episode one, I said that Smolin is mistaken in his belief that quantum mechanics doesn't make sense because it's wrong, because it's incomplete. Instead, quantum mechanics is mysterious because physicists are using the dynamical Newtonian schema model of physical reality to interpret the otherwise correct and complete theory of quantum mechanics. In this episode, I want to show you an alternative interpretation of and approach to physics that gives us a dynamical or constraint-based explanation, what Wharton calls the Lagrangian schema universe, or Lagrangian schema for short. In general, there are two theoretical approaches to physics. You can set up and solve differential equations using Newton's second law, for example, or you can extremize an integral using the stationary action principle of Lagrangian physics, for example. I will refer to thinking and explanation associated with these approaches as dynamical and adynamical, respectively. Again, Wharton refers to them as the Newtonian schema and Lagrangian schema, respectively, which I will adopt as well. I will use the terms constraint-based explanation and adynamical explanation interchangeably for reasons that will become clear shortly. Both formalisms produce the same result for the same problem, so physicists use whichever formalism is easiest on a case-by-case -case basis. Consequently, both formalisms are used to make predictions and create new technology, but generally speaking, only the Newtonian schema, Wilczek's anti view, is used to explain phenomena. Using a dynamical explanation per constraints of the Lagrangian schema means rising to Wilczek's challenge and adopting the God's eye view of physical reality. For example, here's a space time or God's eye view of two cars racing where the blue car gets to the finish line first and the red car arrives a little bit later. Uh, let me pause here. So as to avoid any religious connotations, I will avoid using the term God's eye view and will instead use the term all at once view or black universe view. This view is summed up nicely by Garrick in his 1978 book, General Relativity from A to B. There's no dynamics within space-time itself. Nothing ever moves therein. Nothing happens, nothing changes. In particular, one does not think of particles as moving through space-time or as following along their world lines. Rather, particles are just in space-time, once and for all, and the world line represents, all at once, the complete life history of the particle. An easy way to see the difference between the Newtonian schema, a dynamical explanation, and Lagrangian schema, a dynamical or constraint-based explanation, is to consider the example of a light ray emitted from point S in air and arriving at point C in water. The explanation for the Lagrangian schema is that the path S to R to C is the path of least time, also known as Fermat's principle. The direct path, S to C, takes longer, so it's not the path taken. The Newtonian schema explanation is that the light emitted from S proceeds towards R without deviation, since nothing is interacting with it, until it hits the water at point R. The water then refracts or bends the light, according to Snell's law, towards point C. While both methods yield the same result, we tend to favor the Newtonian schema explanation since the Lagrangian schema explanation sounds a bit like the light ray intended to go to sea and calculated its path based on the presence of the water. But that's only true because you're already thinking dynamically about the light ray. It's leaving the source and heading in a certain direction, etc. Training yourself to think adynamically is not easy. It's truly alien. For example, in The Story of Your Life by Ted Chang, which inspired the 2016 movie Arrival, Earthlings encounter aliens, called heptapods, from another planet and attempt to unravel their language and their physics. The heptapods, however, experience a block universe, perceiving past, present, and future as equally real. This block universe perspective infects both the language and physics of the aliens, and the humans must overcome this difference in perspective in order to understand their new friends. The following is an episode from the story that nicely illustrates the different emphases in human physics and heptapod physics. That day when Gary, the human physicist, first explained Fermat's principle to me, the human linguist, he had mentioned that almost every physical law could be stated as a variational or least action principle. Yet when humans thought about physical laws, they preferred to work with them in their causal formulation. I could understand that. The physical attributes that humans found intuitive, like kinetic energy or acceleration, were all properties of an object at a given moment in time. 
and these were conducive to chronological causal interpretation of events, one moment growing out of another. Causes and effects creating a chain reaction that grew from past to future. In contrast, the physical attributes that the heptapods found intuitive, like action, or those other things defined by integrals, were meaningful only over a period of time, and those were conducive to a teleological interpretation of events. By viewing events over a period of time, one recognized that there was a requirement that had to be satisfied, a goal of minimizing or maximizing, and one had to know the initial and final states to meet that goal. One needed knowledge of the effects before the cause could be initiated. I was growing to understand that, too. Some people do not believe the Lagrangian schema can provide an explanation at all. Here's what Professor Alori had to say about our book in her 2019 review. I am not sold that the adynamical picture is truly explanatory. Philosophers of science have proposed objective accounts of explanation, but they all recognize there's a strong sense in which explanation is explanation for us, and any account should capture our intuition that explanation is fundamentally dynamical. This is connected with causation. Intuitively, we explain an event because we find its causes. Causes happen before their effects and bring them about. And Bradford Scow in his 2018 review writes, it really is necessary to register how wild this idea is. I myself, at least, think that the first claim, dynamical explanation, is true, but that the second, adynamical explanation, is certainly false. Of course, if you explain the initial state of the universe by citing a later state, you probably shouldn't explain the later state by citing the initial state. It can't be both at A because B and B because A. While it is difficult for us ants, the trick is to let go of the mechanical paradigm. There is no dynamical or causal explanation for events in the block universe. As Garrick points out, it's all at once. So the explanation of events in the block universe, Einstein's rules of the game, must certainly be some sort of self-consistency relationship, like a crossword puzzle, and that's what we will see is exactly the case with Einstein's equations of general relativity, for example. So in that analogy, Snell's law is like a game of chess, while Fermat's principle is the crossword puzzle. You can't make move number 15 until after move number 14 in a game of chess. But you can start anywhere in a crossword puzzle. So in a crossword puzzle, it is precisely the case that word A helps explain word B, and word B helps explain word A, contrary to what Scow believes. As we will see, dynamical explanation, a la a game of chess in modern physics, can create puzzles, paradoxes, and conundrums that are easily resolved by a dynamical explanation, a la a crossword puzzle. The episodes that follow will make this point over and over again. Recall from Wilczek's challenge. The account dynamical explanation gives, things are what they are because they were what they were, raises the question, why were things that way and not any other? And look at what Karen Crowther has to say in her 2019 review. From this Newtonian schema universe perspective, even if we discover some fundamental laws or a theory of everything, not only would we be left asking why these laws rather than some other ones, but we'd also be beleaguered by the initial conditions of the universe at the Big Bang, defining dynamical explanations in terms of any prior state. Instead, from the Lagrangian schema universe perspective, there is nothing particularly mysterious or sacred about the initial conditions at the Big Bang, because the conditions at any point in space-time globally constrain the conditions at the other points of space-time. The character of the explanation thus shifts and can be captured by the slogan, everything is the way it is because everything is the way it is, in accordance with the adynamical global constraint. Here's the take home message. If you want to know why something happens the way it does, the fundamental reason has to do with a spatio-temporally holistic characterization of the phenomena under investigation. If the subsequent block universe analysis permits it, a time of all story can be told in conjunction with the adynamical explanation. Otherwise, the fundamental adynamical explanation just does not permit a dynamical story. So the adynamical explanation just has to be accepted as the final answer. Our perceptions are formed in time of all fashion. So we're predisposed to think dynamically and therefore we want to understand and explain what we experience dynamically. However, as we will see over and over again in this video series, Modern physics is telling us that despite our time-evolved perceptions, dynamical explanation is not fundamental. So, 
If you're ready to take the red pill and ascend to the God's eye view, come with me beyond the dynamical universe.